Today we're going to study the trigonometric ratios. The study of trigonometry goes way back to the second millennium BC when the Egyptians started studying it. Um, they noted something. Look at these three tri triangles here. What do you notice is the same and different about them? You might notice they have exactly the same shape, but they don't have the same size. And the Egyptians noticed something about these kinds of triangles. You might remember that these are what are called similar triangles. And these are triangles that have the same shape, but not the same, necessarily the same size, but the corresponding sides are in proportion. And what do we mean by that? Well, let's look down here. Look at these two triangles down here. Notice that they both are 30, 60, 90 right triangles. They both have a 30 degree angle, 60 degree angle, 90 degree angle. But the length of the sides are different. Now let's look at this 30 degree angle in this triangle. Notice that the side exactly opposite, 5, is half the size of the uh, long side, which is called the hypotenuse. Notice that the side opposite the 30 degree angle in this triangle, although it's a different size than the other triangle, it's 10, it's still half the length of the long side in the right triangle, which is also called the hypotenuse. Um, so you notice that even though they are different sizes, the, uh, uh, the corresponding sides are in proportion. For example, let's go back to this one. Notice as I make this bigger, that even though the, sh the size changes, the, rate, the corresponding sides are still in proportion. Notice that this side is still half of this side. That hasn't changed. If I make it smaller, that's still true. They're all similar triangles. This triangle is similar to this triangle, which 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 is similar to this triangle. And notice that the in one example, the side opposite the 30 degree angle is always half the hypotenuse. And this is what the Egyptians noticed. And from this, they were able to come up with the trigonometric ratios. Now, before we could go on to these trigonometric ratios, we need to get a few terms, uh, uh, understand what a few terms are. For instance, if I have angle A here, the side opposite is as if you were standing at A and looking straight out. And you would notice this would be the side that you'd be looking at it <coughs> at. <coughs> excuse me. And that's called the side opposite angle A. Um, the side right next to angle A is called the adjacent side. And that's right here. This was opposite and this was adjacent. And the, the side opposite the right angle in a right triangle, which opposite this right angle, is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side in a right triangle. Now you need to understand that before we can go on. So once again, if we are looking at angle A, the side opposite angle A is as if you're staying at angle A and looking straight out, and there's a side opposite. We often will label that with a little a since it just corresponds to uh, the, the capital A. Um, the adjacent side to angle A is one next to it, and there is that one. Uh, and finally, the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle, this one. And notice we're labeling the sides um, that are opposite the letter with a smaller case. So if this is capital A, there's lowercase a. If this is capital C, there's lowercase c for that side. And if this is capital B, then this is lowercase b on that side. And that's how we label these triangles. So what are these magic trigonometric ratios that we're talking about? Well, they, the ancient uh, people did give names to these. Um, and uh, we have three names. One is sine, one is cosine, and one is tangent. So let's look at our first one, sine. Um, and the sine of A, in this case, we'll look at angle A, is always the opposite side over the hypotenuse. That is considered to be the sine ratio. And even though sine is written S-I-N-E, when we write it as a sine of A, we leave out the E. And you notice we just have sine of A without the little e. 
And the next ratio is the uh, cosine. So if we're looking at the cosine of A, it's considered to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And finally, the, uh, the tangent ratio, and by the way, cosine is written C-O-S-I-N-E, even though the abbreviation is C-O-S. And finally, the tangent ratio is the opposite side over the adjacent side, abbreviated T-A-N for tan. And notice we have a little way, there's a little mnemonic we use to, re to remember these. Uh, the sine, you can think of as opposite of hypotenuse, and therefore we write SOH, and that's right there. Cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse, so we write CAH. And finally, tangent is opposite of adjacent, we call that TOA. So to summarize that, we have this little box made up for you. So this is also uh, in our text. You notice the sine of A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, SOH. T cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse, CAH, and tangent is opposite of adjacent, TOA. And people often use a mnemonic to remember that. And if you remember SOH, CAH, and TOA, and you pronounce that word is SOKATOA. So if you can memorize SOKATOA, you always remember that the sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so Ka is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is always the opposite over the adjacent. So, ka, toa. Okay, so why don't we do some problems involving this? It's really um, using the three ratios. Once again, let's write them at the top. So, ka, toa. So, we have so, sine opposite of hypotenuse, ka, cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse, and toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, it says find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle C in the triangle below. Here's angle C. So we know that the sine of angle C is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that would be standing at C, if you imagine looking out, opposite. You see that 5. And hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. And we see 13, and so the answer is 5 over 13. If we try to find cosine of C, remember that's ka, C-A-H. So that's adjacent. Cosine is adjacent of hypotenuse. So if we look at that one, we notice the adjacent side angle C is 12. So let's write this down. It's always the adjacent. over the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side, as we said, is 12, and over hypotenuse, which we've already said, is 13, and there's our answer. And finally, the tangent, which is TOA, the tangent of C is opposite over the hypotenuse. And looking at angle C, the opposite side is 5. We've already said that before. Oh, I'm sorry. And I, made, I did make a mistake, didn't I? Toa, opposite over adjacent. Yet I wrote opposite of hypotenuse. So I hope you picked up on that. My apologies. And it's opposite over adjacent. And that's where Soka Toa comes in handy because we notice that we have the O for opposite over A for adjacent, so katoa. So we had that. And we'll notice the opposite side is 5, the adjacent side was 12, and there's our answer. So once again, remembering, using so katoa, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and finally the tangent is opposite over adjacent. And that's how we do a problem like this one. And finally, we do a problem that's called finding the lengths of the unknown so, uh, sides and angles in a right triangle. And that's what we have to do in this problem below. Um, 
However, uh, this is also called solving the triangle. So um, one thing that we, we would start is um, we see we have an angle of 21 degrees, um, and we uh, want to find, let's say, this side D. Well, we think to ourselves, gee, we have opposite. We don't know the opposite side, but we do know the hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse, Soka Toa. That's opposite over hypotenuse. Let's write them all down again. So we know that the sine of 21 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and we needed to have know at least one of the sides, which we do, which was 10. Now we can solve this if we multiply both sides by 10. These 10s cancel, and we get D is equal to 10, the sine of 21 degrees. Now you could use your graph and calculator to find this answer, and you will find that the sine of 21 degrees is 0 0.358 times 10, and that means D is equal to 35.8, and that's how we get D. Now, of course, we would like to find E, um, and we can do this in a similar way. So let's draw a line across this, and let's move down a little bit. And let's see, we want to find E, and we can use that, so that 21 degree once again. Notice that E is the adjacent side to angle 21. So we could say, gee, we have an adjacent side. Why not use the hypotenuse that we know? That's adjacent over hypotenuse. That's cosine. So we could say the cosine of 21 degrees is equal to E, the adjacent side, over 10. Therefore, once again, if you multiply both sides by 10, these tens cancel, and we get E equals 10, the cosine of 21 degrees. Now, all we have to do is look up the cosine of 21 degrees on our calculator, and you will get 0.933. Multiply that by, that's a point, not a minus sign. Maybe we should fix that, huh? All right. So it's a point, 0.933, times 10. And so finally, we get E is equal to 93.3. There's one more thing we have to find out, and that is the measure of, because we have to find all the angles and all the sides, we need to find out the measure of the missing angle. But most of you do remember that the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So if one angle is 21 and one angle is 90, we should be able to figure that out. So we know that one angle is 90, one angle is 21, and we don't know what angle E is, but we know that the sum is 180. So that's 111 plus E is equal to 180. If we just subtract 111 from both sides, we get... Angle E is equal to 180 minus 111, and that's 69 degrees. And we, congratulations, we have just solved the triangle. We have found all the angles and all the sides using Soka Toa and knowing that the sum of the measures of an angle are 180 degrees. Please review this, and your problem, now that it's your turn, is to find the sine, cosine, tangent of angle A in the right triangle below in question one. And then you're to solve the triangle in the second question. So good luck and see you again next time.